Aloha everybody, my name is Carolyn Kwan and I'm the producer of the annual Maui Open Studios event. And here we are at UHMC's Paina building. This is the 12th annual Maui Open Studios winter event. We have a winter event and a summer event and our main event is in February. So we're here to feature a number of the artists that are involved in our event, which is a series of self-guided art tours that take place all over the island of Maui in different regions. And tonight's opening celebration and preview exhibition highlights 60 of the artists that are participating in the event. There are a total of 85 artists in the event this year and uh, they work in all different mediums from sculpture to ceramics, painting, fiber, photography, resin, you name it, from A to Z, glass. So we have a really wide range of really talented artists that are on a scale from emerging artists all the way up to very established ones. We also have a visiting artist this year from Oahu, which adds a nice little touch to the event this year. There's so much inspiration that comes from these artists as you visit their studios and exhibition spaces. After the opening celebration and preview exhibition, there are three weekends that follow. So it's a month-long event every weekend. Next weekend will be featured the upcountry artists, so you could take tours of over 40 artists in upcountry. And then the weekend following that is South Maui. And the final weekend and fourth weekend of the event takes place in West Central and North Shore Maui. So this is a great opportunity for art lovers to learn about the processes and the techniques that these artists use, what their inspirations are. You can visit their studios and see their environments, learn about the tools that they use. Some artists give demonstrations, some of them have live music. So every event has a little something unique. Check our online artist directories and our Google map to find all of the artists all over the island. Read a little bit about their background and see samples of their work before you decide whether you want to visit them. And for our main event, we also have a printed guidebook that can be picked up at different locations around the island and also here at the opening celebration. But this is a wonderful way for art lovers to connect with the artists themselves because it's a very uh, rare opportunity uh, for that one-on-one -on -one type of contact. So this is something that we offer in this event. Hi, my name is Christine Wara. I'm an artist. I love to work in multiple mediums, watercolor being the one I started in, and then pastel, oil pastel, oil, and my most recent add-on to all of this is encaustic and it's a wax medium. A lot of people haven't heard of it. It is an ancient art form uh, that started in Egypt back in, I don't know, 600 BC. So it's making a resurgence and I was very fortunate enough to take a class up at the Hui that introduced me to that medium. I find that we have a real nice art community here. We help each other out with resources and one of the things I like to do at the Hui and elsewhere is teach art to people. I, I do think there's an artist in everybody and even when people say, oh, I have no artistic talent, I think they do. They, they just may not know that. It's how they decorate themselves, how they set a table, prepare a meal, how they decorate their home, plant a garden. It's all art. It's our job to bring art to everybody. I think it should be accessible to everyone. That's why I like to work in many different sizes and teach classes so people can make their own artwork. I like to introduce people to each other and connect art with people. I think that art is for everyone. This year in Maui Open Studios, we had a big weather issue and we didn't know whether we were gonna get rained out or not. And I just kept putting it out there that it was gonna be okay, it's all gonna work out. And that's kind of like my philosophy to 
life in general and even to my approach to art making. It's all gonna work out. And sure enough, it did. We did not get rained out. In fact, it turned out to be a beautiful day. Art connects people and in all ways, shapes, and forms. So I was very blessed to have that happen even this past weekend. Welcome to my studio in Haiku. This is where I work and live and am inspired by all the plant life around me. Um, so I don't have to go far to get inspiration. Um, but this is how I get into my studio here. And I was very fortunate to have this area to work in, especially during the pandemic. Um, because I, I could still teach classes back here with one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And this is where I like to make a mess and get my hands dirty. Um, I like to sit here and sometimes read or write or teach um, or work really small or work out my drawings. And during the Maui Open Studios, I just let people play with some oil pastels. Um, I find these very convenient. You can clean them up easily and you know, you're gonna get your hands dirty, but um, I do offer these little gloves to work with. Um, I also want people to feel adventurous and let themselves go and just have fun with color and lines and just not think too much uh, because when you're playing you're not really creating art. You're, you don't have to create art. You can just play and then you can let that dictate where to go next. So um, this is where I work with encaustics. And let me just segue right into encaustics. I used to do watercolors. I still do watercolors, but I started off in watercolors really uh, learning about technique and I got a really good, uh, I had many good teachers who helped me understand value scale and design. And with that, I did a lot of representational art. Um, and as I progressed in my art world, in my art life, I thought about how to loosen up and how to get more expressive and just really um, not think too much about controlling the art. So I ended up here in encaustics where you're working with hot wax medium. And it's um, made from beeswax and damar resin from trees. And so it's a very natural thing, but I need to have a lot of ventilation. So that's why I love this screened-in studio space for that. And my fan works very well for me. So given the fact that we're here in Haiku, I don't have a lot of power coming in here for turning on all my griddles. So I, I'm limited to how many griddles I can turn on. Um, but the reason I like encaustic so much is because it allows the freedom to just play and let the art direct me so I can see what happens and and we're working with layers and scraping back so there's a lot of forgiveness to this medium um, you and what happens with it when you heat every layer with a blowtorch I use a blowtorch or a heat gun to to layer each layer um, to heat and and What's it called? I, I use a blowtorch to seal each layer so that it stays and it works together and sometimes it will run, sometimes it will allow for some texture to happen, but I can work with collage, I can work with found objects. Um, here I just took some cardboard, some cor corrugated cardboard and entered it into the piece. Um, a lot of handmade papers I can use. I can just use some tools to do some mark making. It doesn't matter how I do it, but I can make some marks and I can just be free to, to let the inner child come out again. I think all art is a journey into who we are. Um, so these are a couple works in progress um, and I like to do diptychs, triptychs, and I, I will be working a lot larger. Um, but this is, this is the encaustic medium here, 
And when I heat it up, it's all clear liquid. And I think that too is what drew me to it because it's a lot like watercolor. Once you lay it on the surface, you don't know what's going to happen with it. When you're heating it up, it's very liquid. And, and you just let that settle in and work with it. Um, I also like to work with oil paints and being out here also allows for the ventilation and I can utilize my daylight hours pretty well back here. Um, I usually work on this wall. I'll put up a blank canvas and, um, and then I have a lot of room to walk back and look at it from a distance. But I work in many different mediums and I work, I'm always, I've always got like three or four pieces working at once. So if I'm waiting for an oil to dry, I go to my watercolors or I'll go to my pastels. Um, but there's always something going on and I think I need a lot of challenges. I like keeping my brain active and using it to be expressive because all art is a form of expression and it's all there to connect us with each other. Aloha, I'm Carl Hensel and I'm a glass artist living here in Kihei, Hawaii on Maui and uh, thanks for visiting the studio today. I do glass work and have had a whole career as a designer and glass artist and visual artist. I used to do large scale furnace blown glass and now I focus on wall mounted sculptures that are made of fused plate glass or flat glass in very bright colors with lots of metallic effects and reflective copper and other metals. I like the way that glass captures light and reflects and brings uh, light and color into an interior environment. I have lots of visual influence that I think about when I decide on images to make in glass and I love so much about jazz and music and ocean as you see some of the pieces here and I wanted to make networks of pieces. I love the idea of unifying individual pieces of glass that on their own could not support the weight of a whole structure of a piece but together they're able to create the physical strength to support a large network of things. And there's, that's such a good metaphor for so much about life. They reference microbes or galaxies or brain functions and the interconnectedness of all of that. And then I just trust my instinct about the, the creative process and I see where it takes me and check it all the time and see if it's saying what I want it to say. And it's just a very involved and meditative process. My works take a long time to construct and, and put together and uh, sometimes magic happens and I get some really cool results out of it. Viewpoints Gallery up in Makawao uh, represents my work and has some large scale pieces and some great examples and they're a terrific gallery. Open Studio has been terrific. It's a great way for uh, people in the area and visitors to come and see Maui working artists and this is my shop and it's a wonderful place. It's an indoor outdoor studio. Myself and my partner Steve show glass. We've been making glass here for six or seven years and Open Studios has been a terrific way to engage and interact with the, the community. The Open Studios is exciting that it's returned in full force this year. They had the preview party at the community college a few weeks ago and it gave everyone a chance to come out and see what all the great arts are available in Maui. So we're happy to be part of the show this year and have all the people come, come out and feel welcome. I make lots of components and stockpile them. And this becomes my library to assemble and design pieces from. So I'm making uh, pieces specifically for uh, specific design works, but I also make just lots of pieces just to play with. And then these become samples to um, do layouts on my table and try different collage configurations and see what I like and, and then I will make specific pieces to uh, complete a design. But I, I do work a lot with that and here's some large framed face heads that I'm working on. These are some restorations of earlier works but the king and a prince that are 
We're gonna get some more details on them. At the parts store, there's a, a, a network of uh, Eagle Rays that's coming. Like that. So, so I make all those components, and then if we go over here <clears throat> on a piece like this. You can see all those elements that that I might do sample sections of. Then I start collaging them and seeing what works well together, and doing color uh, configurations and. Then I'll make special pieces to go in and fill gaps that have to be a certain color or a certain shape and uh, start working the assembly and the assembly is all with um, custom built copper uh, tube sections and uh, wires that are through all these hundreds of drilled holes in the glass. So I spent a lot of time on a drill press drilling uh, diamond uh, cut holes through the through the glass panel so that I can make this flexible nap. And then I also use a lot of copper or gold leaf uh, in uh, imprinted sections on the back of the glass artwork, such as this um, wave piece over here, These all these lines. I'm going to lift this out and show the back side of it so you can see the this is gold leaf with uh, an acrylic gold sealer over the top of it so that you can see. Like so. And here's uh, the large kiln that I do most of the firings in. This is set up for mold slumping right now where we do custom sheets and then they are relaxed into these mold forms and my partner Steve is doing those kind of pieces. But I'll do the kiln shelf with uh, cut um, high temperature felt designs cut out of fabric and uh, laid in and then the large sheets of glass such as that wave uh, drape down over the, the uh, felt designs. And they're typically fired to 1500 degrees and um, takes about a day and a half to do a firing. And then I do a lot of cold work processes. So after the glass comes out of the kiln, I do gold leaf um, and I do all of the copper work to assemble. Um, here's an experimental piece that I'm working on that's um, a glass casting that you can see, um, and this is a new experiment, but that's a sand cast piece of glass. And then all of these kiln castings that were done in molds are uh, gonna be mounted on this in a, in a sort of a cloud of glass shapes around the form. So we're still experimenting with that one. It's, this is just in its early experimental phases. Aloha, my name is Taryn Alessandro. I am a mixed media artist here on Maui. As you can see, I like to use an array of different materials. What's unique about my work is I'll use literally anything. Uh, sand, aluminum can tabs, rocks, metal, paint, acrylic, oil. I sculpt pieces out to start. Um, I'll use modeling paste to sculpt a base or concrete or any kind of texture. I do my sketch and then I start layering the textures. Grass, sand, like I said, metal, collage paper, and then from there I can layer on my oil paint. So I'm classically trained as an oil painter, so that's how I like to finish my work. And I do all the experimenting beforehand with textures and materials. The figure has always been primary in my work. However, when I moved to beautiful Maui, I can't escape from the gorgeous landscape all the time. And so I've started incorporating my mixed media techniques into landscape and really became able to experiment a lot within that arena, building textures and techniques, and it sort of allows more freedom, more creative freedom. So in that department, I'm self-taught in all the weird materials that I'm using that I'll try to engineer into the work and create a light and texture 
so that when different lighting scenarios hit the materials, it changes from when you're standing on this side to this side or from night to day and uh, it becomes more of an interactive art viewing experience. I've been doing Maui Open Studios since the very first one. This year, I used to have them at my home studio, and then I got this studio in downtown Wailuku, and this year it's been extra special because they just named Wailuku as an arts district. And so we have several artists showing, and all these new artists, and the murals, and boutiques, and shops showing up, and it's really making the city feel so much more vibrant and alive, and it's exciting to share with everybody. I guess I just want to say thank you to everybody who's come to check out my technique and process. I always try to, to do things that are a little bit outside of the norm and that haven't been done before and it's a constant experiment in my studio which I love. It keeps me entertained and fulfilled. So thank you for supporting the arts and hope to see ya. And this is my studio. This is where I work, where the magic happens. Uh, right now I'm working on uh, three different commissions. I have to work on several pieces at a time because of the layering process and drying times and this and that. I'm too impatient to, to waste, so three at a time it is. Um, and here you'll see my sand collection from the different types of sand I work with. I've got acrylic pigments, gels, gesso paste, sculpting paste, different mediums, interference colors. These are some pigments I've collected from other countries when I make my own paint. Um, all kinds of brushes and spatulas, markers, inks, papers, metals, um, glass, remnants, aluminum can tabs, and uh, in the back I've got a whole bunch of natural materials I use, like palm fibers, uh, woods, things like that. All right, here I've got driftwood scraps and bamboo, woods, shells, Here's some beached lobsters that I think I might use some, sometime. Uh, <laughs> sea glass, corks, flowers. Here's, you know, some different leaves I've been Saving I think might be cool to use. Recycled plastics. I picked each and every one of these. I have tons off the beach myself to use. Um, you name it, I've got it. My encaustics, nets I've rescued from the beach also. Things that need a second life. <laughs> these are my vintage Hawaiian coffee bags here. Uh, all the different types of textures and materials that I've collected over the years. I have fun. <laughs> and here uh, you can see I'll use um, seashells, uh, paint, electrical wire, sculpting with pastes and gels, different metal leaves, gold, silver, you name it, uh, moss, sand. I have my own uh, sand texture that I've come up with that I uh, it took me years to come up with the exact mixture that I thought worked best and I mix sand and paint with it and then paint with the sand. Um, aluminum foil in here, uh, natural grasses, wood. This is Kiran board. It was remnants of building the bar at Hono restaurant in Lahaina. And I've used interference colors as well. So if you move around the piece, you'll see that it goes from blue to gold. <laughs> I don't know if you can catch that on camera, but uh, it's part of what makes my work unique is the lighting and textures, and they sort of change and interact with the lighting around you. I mean, you name it, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> I've got, yeah, the paint chips when you go to the hardware store and uh, you're picking out a color, the little color chips, I use those all the time. You can see in this piece, I use the Z Ocean. This piece is very special. It was made out of a 100 year old 
Lahaina bench, a bench in Lahaina. And my friend called me, he said, they're gonna get rid of this bench and they cannot get rid of it. We have to do something special with it. I signed up for the task and I preserved the wood, we deconstructed it and reassembled it as a painting panel. And then I've gone in and sculpted out the wave on top um, and wood burned in figure, it was oil paint. And then uh, vintage Hawaiian coffee bags I use as well. So somebody also gave me their collection of vintage Hawaiian coffee bags that they had been saving. And uh, they said, you know, I think you might be able to do something special with this. And you can see it in several of my pieces. Um, here, for example, or this one, two other pieces where I've used the um, reclaimed wood. Here's a one I've used the cam tabs as texture in the metals. And in here you can see again these collage papers of the yeah. hardware store color swatches, I guess, if you will. And then it's variegated gold leaf, which is actually copper treated with um, different chemicals to oxidize it in this tie-dye sort of way. Um, let me show you this other piece I have. Oh, golden palm. This one I did, uh, I made a whole uh, panel. I gold leafed the whole thing. And then I put an isolation layer of crackle, a, a crackle medium essentially, with a layer of paint on top. And so the paint on top dries faster than the isolation layer. And it splits the paint, revealing the gold shining through underneath. Um, and I use real coconut fibers in the palm tree, sand from Maui, modeling paste, fibrous papers as the clouds. And then for this, shine, I guess, on the top of the gold, I actually use a relief paste. And instead of gold leaf for this, I use gold mirror foil. And so it gives it, it's actually even shinier than gold leaf. So that's why I picked that. <laughs>